Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Teveron here, and welcome back to my first ever set review for Magic Duels. This time, we will be going over the blue cards. And just as a reminder, these are my opinions and raw card evaluations, having never actually played any constructed with the cards. I have, however, played a bit of limited with some of them now, and may have a bit more insight from that. If you would like to check out the colorless or white reviews, just click on the annotations on the screen or the links in the description below. Now, let's begin, shall we? First up, we have Aether Meltdown. For one blue and one generic, we get an enchantment with Flash, so we can cast this spell anytime we can cast an instant. Enchant creature or vehicle, and that is an important caveat there. When Aether Meltdown enters the battlefield, you get two energy counters, and the enchanted permanent gets minus four, minus O. There's a lot going on with this card, and while it's not the most exciting removal ever, it is removal in blue, which there is very little of. Plus, it helps deal with vehicles. I think this card is a solid medium, and it is a card that may help push a non-black control deck closer to viability. Also, may just go into an energy deck that's running blue. Who knows? The instant speed castability is just gravy on the top. Next up, we have Aether Theorist. For a blue and a generic, we get a 1-3 creature, Veldokan Rogue. When Aether Theorist enters the battlefield, you gain three energy counters. You can tap it, pay an energy, and scry one. Well, Sigled Starfish sees little to no play at present. And while this guy isn't straight out worse, as he does provide energy and has a point of power, his ability is much worse, so I don't really expect this to see a lot of play. Aether Trade Winds is a blue and two generic for an instant that lets you return target permanent you control and target permanent you don't control to their owner's hands. This card saw very little play when it was printed in the past. However, if a deck that abuses Enter the Battlefield triggers is a thing, then I think that this card will be part of that deck. It's also decent at resetting Planeswalker loyalty and making combat math difficult. Aether Squall Ancient is two blue and five generic for a 6-6 six, six flying leviathan. At the beginning of your upkeep, you get three energy counters. If you pay eight energy counters, then return all other creatures to their owner's hands. Activate this ability only any time you could cast a sorcery. So, you got lots of energy or you want lots of energy? This guy makes a ton of energy. If you already have 8 energy when you cast him, then he kinda wrecks the board. Even better, he's a rare, so we can actually play two of them instead of just the one we could play if he was a mythic. I can see this being a finisher in a ramp deck that has blue mana in it, and I can also see it being a finisher in a control deck. I've even been known to play a few of both of those myself from time to time. Yeah, I think the Leviathan has the potential to be pretty good, though I really hope he doesn't end up being a card that just eats a removal spell 90% of the time you cast him. Confiscation Coup. For two blue and three generic, we get a sorcery. Choose target artifact or creature. You get four energy counters. Then you may pay an amount of energy equal to that permanent's converted mana cost. If you do, gain control of it. All right, I really like this card. It's not control magic by any means, but it's also not an enchantment, so the opponent can't get their creature back by removing it. In fact, it most closely resembles Exert Influence, a card that didn't actually make it into magic duels. Though I also think Confiscation Coup is easier to power than Exert Influence would be. And this is an effect that we really didn't have available to us previously. It can also steal bigger things if you are making other energy, or leave a bit of energy behind if you don't need the full four right then. Stealing a thing is always way more backbreaking than just killing a thing. 
and I really expect Confiscation Coup to see a lot of play. On all of these cards that allow you to spend energy, Confiscation Coup, which is a sorcery, and there's others that we will see, it's important to note that you don't have to actually choose whether or not to spend the energy until the spell resolves, which can lead to some interesting interactions. I present as an example Die Young, a card we have not yet reviewed, but we will go over in greater detail in the black part of the set review. Die Young is a sorcery that you choose target creature and get two energy counters. Then you may pay any amount of energy and the creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn for each energy paid this way. The important thing to note here is that the gaining of energy and the choosing how much energy to spend do not happen until the spell resolves. Therefore, if the creature you're targeting is something that can pump itself or the opponent has a spell to pump it on defense or whatever to keep it alive, they must do that before you choose what amount of energy to spend. Therefore, if you are targeting a 2-2, and they choose not to cast a pump spell on it or use an ability it has to pump itself, and you then choose to spend two energy, they have no response to that. The creature is just dead. Also, if they choose to pump it and you don't have enough energy to kill it, you can choose not to spend any energy at all and just gain the energy. It's a very interesting interaction one that I hope they get correct on Magic Duels, as it will make for a lot of very complex interactions. So that's something to be very aware of. Up next, we have Curio Vendor. For a blue and a generic, we get a 2-1 Vidalcan. That's it. Yeah. I don't think Vidalcan Tribal is going to be a thing, at least not yet by any means and vanilla two ones for two are not appealing even in a tribalish deck play something else in this slot please pretty please up next we have a dramatic reversal for a blue and a colorless we have an instant that untaps all non-land permanents you control so yeah Please don't play this card. It doesn't draw a card, it doesn't add any stats to the board, or really do anything but untap your non-lands. Now that being said, I do fully expect to be gotten with this card at least once on an attack where the opponent untaps to block. That doesn't make the card good. This card is bad, and I'm begging you, please don't play this card. Now, some of you are not going to listen to me, and that's your prerogative, but I'm begging all the same. Dramatic Reversal is a bad card. Era of Innovation. For a blue and a generic, we get an enchantment that whenever an artifact or artificer enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay one. If you do, you get two energy counters. You may pay six energy counters and sacrifice Era of Innovation to draw three cards. So this card can potentially make a lot of energy. The draw three cards ability may even be secondary to that, just depending on the directions that energy slash artifact slash artificer decks go. If you aren't playing any other energy makers and just want to draw three with this, I don't think it's good enough. It's too slow and doesn't do anything until you pop it. In an energy-themed deck, though, it may be good. It may be great. It's definitely not bad. Up next, we have Gear Seeker Serpent. A 2 blue, 5 generic, 5 6. Serpent that costs 1 less to cast for each artifact you control. So it has pseudo affinity. We can also pay a blue and 5 generic mana to give Gear Seeker Serpent the ability to not be blocked this turn. So this guy is competing with Aether Squall Ancient and other fatties. I don't think he's good enough. 
Ancient does so much more for 7 mana than this guy, so I'm really not impressed. Maybe he can fit into some sort of artifacty type deck that's running blue. I don't know. I just don't think he's good enough. Glimmer of Genius. One blue and three generic for an instant that allows you to scry two, then draw two cards, and you get two energy counters. Oh my, did I just stumble into the Wayback Machine and get teleported to ten years ago? Is this really a good blue card draw spell making it into Magic Duels? Is this a sign that after so much decline, Blue might actually be allowed to catch up to the likes of Tireless Tracker and Duskwatch Recruiter level of card draw. I hope, hope, hope so. Even without the energy that this card gives, it's better than anything else that Blue has at the moment in the way of card draw. Honestly, this is not the most powerful card in the set. Despite my overflowing giddiness about it, but damn if I don't feel like a kid again looking at it. Scry 2 plus draw 2 is very close to just drawing 3 or 4, depending on the circumstances. And once the game gets to the point that drawing a land becomes more like just drawing no card at all, then this is actually much closer to drawing 4. And at instant speed, it's ridiculous. I'm grinning ear to ear. Glint Nest Crane. For a blue and a generic, we get a 1-3 flying bird. When Glint Nest Crane enters the battlefield, look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal an artifact card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. This seems like something a blue artifact deck would want to play. You only need to have 10 artifacts in your deck to make the probability of hitting one greater than 50%. And at 20 artifacts, which I admit is probably overkill, it's over 80%. The crane also has a nice big booty to block with. I like it a lot. Up next, we have High Tide Hermit. For a blue and four generic, we get a 4-4 four, four crab with defender. And when High Tide Hermit enters the battlefield, you get four energy counters. You may pay two energy counters, and High Tide Hermit can attack this turn as though it didn't have defender. Well, I suppose you gotta balance out the glimmer of geniuses with something bad, and I guess this is it. Bad hermit crab, go home. Nobody wants you here. Insidious Will is two blue and two generic for an instant. Choose one. Either counter target spell, or you may choose new targets for target spell, or copy target instant or sorcery spell, and you may choose new targets for the copy. Well, duels did not get summary dismissal. So this doesn't compete with that spell. And while the card isn't super powerful, options are always good. And I think Insidious Will will see some amount of play. How much, though, is uncertain. Long Finned Sky Whale. For two blue and two generic, we get a 4 3 Flying Whale. Long Finned Sky Well can only block creatures with flying. Well, a 4 3 flyer for 4 is pretty good. Not being able to block ground creatures is pretty bad. This guy is a lot more likely to see play in duels than in paper magic since cards like Gisela can't be run as a 4 of. Though my honest first impression is that he isn't quite good enough. I wouldn't at all be surprised, though, if I were wrong on this one. Up next, we have Malfunction. For a blue and three generic, we get an enchantment, enchant artifact, or creature. When Malfunction enters the battlefield, tap Enchanted Permanent. Enchanted Permanent doesn't untap during its controller's untap step. Now, we already have similar effects to this in Claustrophobia and Dehydration that don't really see play. And while this can hit artifacts, I think the 4 mana is probably too much. This will see fringe play at most, I think. Minister of Inquiries. For 1 blue, we get a 1-2 Veldokan Advisor. When Minister of Inquiries enters the battlefield, you get 2 energy. 
You may tap him and pay an energy, and target player puts the top three cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. So the question is, does this guy fit in the Sphinx's tutelage decks? I'm honestly not sure. He's much more vulnerable than tutelage is, but then again, he also costs less and can block if you need him to. I think he probably will see play, at least early on. It may turn out that he isn't good enough to make the cut, but I think it will take actual time and games played to determine that. Nimble Innovator for a blue and three generic, we have a 2-2 Veldokan Artificer. When Nimble Innovator enters the battlefield, draw a card. Uh, this doesn't seem good enough, especially with Foxy Brown making the rounds. Padim, Consul of Innovation. For a blue and three generic, we get a 1-4 Legendary Veldokan Artificer. Artifacts you control have Hexproof. And at the beginning of your upkeep, if you control the artifact with the highest converted mana cost, or Tide for the highest converted mana cost, draw a card. Well, I'm not completely sold on this guy for Constructed, but I did have him in a sealed pool, and boy howdy was he good there. Removal is much more dependable in Constructed though, and it's pretty easy, I think, to just off him and worry about the artifacts he's protecting later on. Still, it could turn out that he provides enough value and we'll see play. I can't help but feel that he's just a bit too clunky, though. Up next, we have Sahili's Artistry. For two blue and four generic, we get a sorcery that allows you to choose one or both of its modes. Create a token that's a copy of target artifact and or create a token that's a copy of target creature, except it's an artifact in addition to its other types. Okay, six mana at sorcery speed is a lot to ask. I do expect this to see some amount of play though, simply because the gear hulks exist, and this can copy the same one twice as they are artifacts and creatures. The hulks are mythic, however, in trying to pull off getting a one of onto the field, and then a two of in your hand seems kind of sketchy. Of course, you could always copy the opponent's stuff or other things that you control if there's anything else of value worth copying. You definitely get more from the card when you can use both modes though, and I'm not entirely sure at this point how often that will be possible. If artifacts turn out to be a huge part of the duel's meta though, then this card's stock goes up by quite a substantial margin. Select for inspection. For one blue, we get an instant that returns target tapped creature to its owner's hand and lets you scry one. This is not nearly as good as something like Vapor Snag, but it's probably okay if you're just trying to stay alive long enough to do something ridiculous and win the game. The scry is nice as well. This seems like a purely defensive card as it can't really deal with blockers. Still, I think it may see some amount of fringe play, or maybe even a bit more if there is a combo deck that just needs to buy a little bit of time until it can go off. Shrewd Negotiation is for generic and a blue sorcery that allows you to exchange control of target artifact you control and target artifact or creature you don't control. Alright, I really want to say that this card is just bad, but... If you can pull off a deck that generates a bunch of servos or thopters or clues and you have need for a five cost card and no better option presents itself and you know that's a lot of boxes to tick but if you do manage to tick them off then I suppose shrewd negotiation would be the card for you. Thriving Turtle is one blue for a 0-3 turtle. When it enters the battlefield you get two energy and whenever Thriving Turtle attacks you may pay to energy. If you do, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Maybe this guy can see play in a blue energy deck? I mean, he does fuel Aether Squall Ancient, and he has a fairly large backside for one mana, even without triggering any of the plus one, plus one counters. I think testing will be needed to sway my opinion either way, but right now I'm leaning towards the turtle not being quite good enough. 
Torrential Gear Hulk. For two blue and four generic, we get a 5 6 artifact creature construct with flash. When Torrential Gear Hulk enters the battlefield, you may cast target instant card from your graveyard without paying its mana cost. If that card would be put into a graveyard this turn, exile it instead. Well, here is the second of the Gear Hulk cycle. The Fat Caster Mage, so to speak. Now, the first time I read this card, I misread it and thought that it could also flash back sorceries just like Snapcaster Mage could. Alas, he cannot. Still, he is huge and instant speed with a whole lot of potential upside. And like all of the Gear Hulks, I think he will see quite a bit of play. And with more instants being added to the format with future set releases, he should get better as time goes on. I feel he has the greatest potential upside of all of the cycle to be truly busted as time goes on. But at the moment, I would still rate him quite good. Veldokan Blademaster, a blue and two generic for a 2-3 Veldokan soldier with prowess. I uh, think I'll just stick with playing Thermo Alchemist. Or Storm Chaser Mage. Or Abbot of Curl Keep. Or Bedlam Reveler. Shall I go on? No? Okay then. Weldfast Wingsmith. For a blue and three generic, we get a 3-3 three, three human artificer creature that whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, Weldfast Wingsmith gains flying until end of turn. Even in an artifact deck, I don't think that this creature gets the nod. Mediocre stats for cost and a trigger that isn't guaranteed to trigger when you need it to. Poor Wingsmith is left looking for thermals all by himself. And that brings us to the end of the blue cards of Kaladesh. Shall we rate the top five? Of course we shall. That way, everyone can post and tell me how wrong I was two months from now. Blue is not getting as many exciting additions as I would like. Still, there are a few cards that I'm very excited about. And as with white, there are no honorable mentions. Coming in at number five, we have Sahili's Artistry. I guess you now see what I meant about not a ton of the cards being super exciting, right? There was just nothing better to put at number five. Still, in the right circumstances, Sahili's Artistry may be broken. Though the other four cards making the top five list, I'm much happier about. Coming in at number four, Confiscation Coup. With this card, blue gains not only removal, but removal that also gives you a threat. It may not be as good as a control magic or a mind control, but I'm still very excited to play with this card. Coming in at number three, we have Aether Squall Ancient. I really, really hope this guy turns out to be the ramp slash control finisher that I feel he can be. And that he doesn't fall prey to the old just about every piece of removal kills him clause. That would be very sad. At number two, we have Torrential Gear Hulk. Honestly, if not for the existence of the card that I have at number one, this guy would have that slot. And maybe he should anyway. I'm probably just nostalgia blind about the card, honestly. And maybe he should anyway. I'm probably just being nostalgia blind about that card, honestly, but I can't help but give the number one slot to Glimmer of Genius. Okay. Fairly recently, there existed cards in standard paper magic called Dig Through Time and Treasure Cruise. And I am not saying this card is that power level. Not by a long shot. However, Duel's Origins never had those cards, and this is the first card that we've gotten in, well, ever, that begins to even approach what I would call a good draw card in blue. There was a time when I would have classified myself as a blue mage, though these days I'll play anything that works. I can't help but feel a surge of excitement when we get a spell like this that harkens back to those bygone days of yore. 
but enough sentimental gushing. That will do it for this installment. Join me next time when we go through the black cards of Kaladesh. Thanks so much for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please leave a like below. It helps tremendously. And subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future. I have been Teveron, and until next time, friends, be excellent to each other.